Okay, because we're coming to you from a remote location, can we ask you to switch off your camera as lovely as it is to see everybody? Um, just for the time being, because we're, we're talking to you on a slightly difficult uh, internet connection. Uh, it is great to see everybody. Thank you ever so much. Um, just so that we can um, uh, maximize the uh, opportunity uh, and minimize the chance of the connection um, presenting us with some challenges. Now, we, you may find from time to time, hello everybody, by the way, I'm Simon, Simon Roper. Um, Fraser is here with us uh, at the moment. Uh, yeah, sorry, we, you just froze up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, We're having okay. a few. <laughs> um, we are experiencing Oops. some, a uh, little bit of challenge around the internet connection, but wonderful Technical to problems. walk, uh, to welcome everybody from all over the place. Um, and we just, I'm just making sure that everybody is coming in. There's more people coming in now. Oh, there we go. Come. Fantastic. Welcome. Welcome. Yes. Audio connecting. Brilliant. Wonderful. So if you just wait for the audios to connect. Hi, everybody. I'm Simon and Fraser is the other camera that's on. Hi. Uh, once you connected it. Yeah. If you can keep your cameras off, that would be great. Though It's lovely to see everybody um, just so that we can preserve our bandwidth here from uh, rural Devon, where we're talking to you from. Uh, and I'm about half an hour's drive away from where Fraser's talking to you from. Um, so for the miracle of technology, we can all appear. Um, we can both appear in the same location. Brilliant. Welcome to Ambios Effective uh, Camera Trapping Week One. Um, first, um, first webinar. Uh, we're very excited um, because we're always intrigued um, to see what uh, photos people can uh, bring forward. Thank you ever so much for joining the course. It's really great. Um, and uh, you'll be aware if you've come across Ambios and if you've popped onto the website, ambios.net, you'll be aware we do a range of nature conservation training uh, offers from 12 week residential stuff down at our rewilding farm through to courses like this. And, um, and we've got some really exciting news just breaking over the last couple of days. We've got some additional funding to, to roll out some more effective uh, courses, effective bird ID, effective tree identification. We've got some funding to enable us to develop those uh, courses. So we're really, um, really pleased about that. We're excited about that. Um, so uh, my name is Simon, Simon Roper. I'm uh, one of the Ambios team. And <clears throat> I've been working in nature conservation training for lots of years, as you can tell from the gray hair, um, helping people achieve their goals for, for nature and for science, uh, for employment, um, and uh, for whatever life journey you want to do. And part of that is, um, is this effective camera trapping, been involved with camera trapping uh, since it first started to emerge uh, more than a decade ago, uh, when the cameras were a lot bigger than they are now, took a lot more batteries, um, and we're slightly less reliable. Um, but um, it's great to be now uh, in a position where we can send you a camera or you can obtain the same camera and we can talk you through using the learning materials online, um, actually how to become an effective camera trapper. Our, our sense was that people, uh, lots of people have camera traps and they've experimented with them and they've got some shots. We wanted to focus in on, on making camera trapping really effective to, to achieve the objectives that you were setting out to do. Um, so we've got this six week course and every Monday we'll be releasing the next uh, section of learning materials for you to work through, combination of uh, videos and, and uh, text files. And we'll be getting together this time each week, um, either from this location or in week four, actually coming to you from the field. Um, if we can pull it off uh, from a re remote location, um, sharing with you how to become more focused uh, and more effective in your camera trapping. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Fraser, who's going to introduce himself and take us through some of the stuff for so far. Is that okay, Fraser? Over to you. Okay, thanks, Simon. Um, yes, hi, I'm Fraser, Fraser Rush. Um, I, uh, like Simon, I've been involved in camera trapping for about 10 years since uh, these things became uh, widely available, really. Um, I've had a career, <coughs> excuse me, I've had a career in nature conservation, uh, mostly on the site management, nature reserve management side of things. Uh, for the last six years, I've been doing a lot of freelance work, um, including, of course, working for Ambios, doing lots of uh, different training projects. Um, I have a real passion for camera trapping. I think it's brilliant fun. I think it has a great uh, role to play in our business. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really passionate about it. And I really love sharing uh, experiences and uh, just what we can get out of it. 
Uh, I see we've just had Phoebe just join us. Welcome, Phoebe. So I think that's everybody for everyone we're expecting this week. That's brilliant. Well done, everybody, for joining. Um, so, yes, a um, number of things then to go through this evening. Um, firstly, uh, we have obviously sent you all uh, a camera. Um, can we just check uh, if you use the reactions button at the bottom of your screen can we just check well a of course that you can hear us all and b that you have received your camera can you give us a thumbs up uh, that's yeah one more to Nearly. go yes yay yes oh. hey brilliant 10 thumbs up that's perfect good excellent okay <laughs> and a round of applause Shoot. absolutely yes. hey. <laughs> <laughs> um so yes, uh, in that case, you would have received uh, your cameras with the uh, SD card, which was preloaded with some images. These were images that were taken back in the uh, spring of this year at a site uh, near to where I live here in Devon um, from two different cameras. Uh, one of those was uh, a load of stills and the other was a load of videos. And we've asked you to look through them. Now these images are unedited. That's the key thing to remember here. These are unedited. We're showing you, in effect, the good, the bad, and the ugly here. Uh, we're showing you what goes well with camera trapping, what goes less well, and what goes downright wrong. Um, so you can see the sort of experiences that you might be in for. Um, we've asked you to uh, look at the number of species that you can see. A number of you have mentioned that there are 10 species, if you include the man and the dog. Um, and uh, all the other species you correctly listed. That's brilliant, well done. Um, now, things to note. Um, I say you can see the good, the bad, and the ugly. What we call bad in the camera trapping business is generally a false trigger. It's where the camera has taken a photograph or a video of something, um, but not an animal, basically. And that can happen for many reasons, which we'll be exploring uh, later in the course. Um, but you'll have seen the number of false triggers that are there within those uh, sets of data. Uh, a number of photographs with apparently no animal, a number of videos with apparently no animal. So false triggers are something that uh, we have to live with, um, but we try to reduce and keep to a minimum. But more on that in a later week. Um, what else? You will have also seen that uh, the images can be uh, very good sometimes if the lighting is good or they can be less good. And sometimes they can be positively blurry or dim. And this does lead to a lot of identification challenges. Uh, for example, identifying deer when the photos are that poor. Um, if you look closely at the deer in these photos, you can see they have tails, um, which should rule out roe deer. Um, but they don't have any antlers. They were taken at the wrong time of the year, so we can't tell for sure. And because most of those photos are taken at night, we can't really see the colours. Um, I can tell you they are in fact fallow deer, but uh, only because I know the sight. Uh, so yeah, we do get a lot of identification challenges with camera trapping, and that's something that you will uh, find out as you go along. Um, poor lighting is, is the key thing really, uh, as well as movement. Camera traps can be quite poor at freezing fast moving creatures. Uh, so sometimes you get quite a blurry images, uh, quite a blurry image. So we're, we're trying to show you here all the different sort of, uh, you know, what, what can go, what can go well as well as what can go wrong. Okay. Um, so as I say, you've, uh, you've all seen that. You've all seen those 10 species. Um, uh, moving on then. Um, you will have all had a go at taking some images with the camera trap, the uh, out of the box exercise. Uh, your results so far, uh, what have we had? Um, we've had, uh, somebody got a photo of a flatmate. I'm not quite sure what a flatmate is, um, but uh, yes, well done, got a photo of a flatmate. Somebody got a picture of a badger, which, uh, which is um, tantalizing really. As we go into this, as we go further into the course, uh, you will note that we're asking you to upload, <coughs> excuse me, upload images every week. So having, um, having got images of somebody had a badger, somebody had a fox, in future weeks, it's going to be great for us to be able to share that and for you to upload those images so that we can all see them. 
Um, many of you have had photos of cats. Uh, not really at all surprising. There are a lot of cats out there, particularly in gardens. I know if I set a camera trap in my garden, I might get a few hedgehogs, but I'll certainly get a lot of cats. Uh, so yes, fair enough, uh, lots of shots of cats. And then two of you have posted photos of hedgehogs. Absolutely brilliant. Really nice to see hedgehogs in the garden. Uh, so well done. Hedgehogs are great for camera trapping. They don't move too fast. They hang around in front of the camera. They can do all sorts of interesting things in front of the camera. Uh, so well done. Two nice shots of hedgehog from Rebecca and from Robin. Um, so thanks for those. Okay. So moving on to uh, the week ahead. Uh, so what's in store for us this week? Um, there's a number of uh, learning materials on the Moodle to work through. Um, we have uh, information on the rules and regulations. We have information on, uh, there's a short video, uh, unfortunately featuring me, a short video of uh, setting your camera trap in the garden, um, which I was looking at, it earlier, looking at it earlier. I was reminded that we took the videos back in the winter uh my garden doesn't look like that at the moment um but uh yeah it's uh, it's quite interesting as a passage of time from when we first start making these things it was actually i think february or march when we were shooting those videos uh so apologies for that if they don't look particularly summary um what else have we got in the week ahead negotiating access this is an important one something that uh is flagged up um as the course progresses it's going to be quite important for you to have access to a site where you can deploy your camera um, safely and securely in a location where you would expect, hopefully, to see some wildlife. Um, so for some of you, that might be easier than for some others, uh, but uh, hopefully you can all find somewhere um, where um, a site where you can find a site which meets those conditions as uh, as you know, we do need to try these things out on a range of different um, um, scenarios and hopefully get some pictures of a range of wildlife. Um, then the other thing that will be starting uh, in the week ahead, which uh, will be repeated every week in effect, is to upload your three best images. Um, and we say three, we're trying to preserve the bandwidth here, here down here in the primitive southwest England we uh, we don't have the best of broadband sometimes and uh, so we are trying to uh, to preserve what we have here by limiting uh, to some extent at least limiting the the amount of material which is uploaded um, particularly you'll find that in the one week where we're encouraging you to look at videos which isn't this week but uh, in any case um, useful for us to see images of what you've recorded um, also, as the weeks go ahead, you'll see uh, most weeks we ask you to upload an image of your camera in situ. In other words, an image not taken with the camera trap, but taken with another camera or with your phone or whatever, showing your camera trap in its position, in the position that you have selected, um, the, th the, the position that you think is going to be the best place to see uh, lots of lovely wildlife. Um, and that hopefully will provide, uh, will sort of spark off uh, topics for discussion on different types of locations that, uh, that you might find. Um, so that's what the week ahead has in store. Um, anything to add, Simon? Have you got anything else there? A um, couple of quick things. I think we're, we're really excited to be joined by people from all over the UK and indeed internationally. Um, so I think I'm right in saying that we're talking to uh, people on stateside across the pond. Uh, which is very exciting. So we're interested to see what, what you uh, can uh, highlight with your camera traps from America. That would be really interesting. Um, so as well as different parts of the UK, because different, different things obviously um, uh, occur in different areas. Um, so just one thing about uh, Facebook and looking for the uh, Facebook group. We have a Facebook group, a community of interest, um, which um, we're asking you if you're should you be on Facebook uh, to go and have a look for the Ambios Effective Camera Trapping Community of Interest and ask to join uh, and then I can let you in. Now that, that has a bunch of about 20 folk who came through the first iteration of this course uh, just recently uh, and so you can see some of the uh, outputs from their cameras as well and share 
um, some of your output as well. Um, so it's not, not an urgent thing, but uh, we'll be reminding you of it. We don't need it until week four, um, but we just mention it now. Um, if you'd like to uh, hop onto Facebook and have a look for the Ambios Effective Camera Trapping uh, community of interest then. Um, and the idea from that is if you want to continue in that group after the course, then you can. Um, and then as, as we run courses in the future, then th there'll be more cohorts like you coming through. And the idea is to create that community of interest and expertise as we go on into the future, sharing good practice, uh, sharing top tips. One of the things about camera traps, of course, is that they, as we said it right at the beginning, they've evolved. Um, you know, they, they're constantly um, new and innovative little bits being added to them. Uh, and so one would expect that to continue into the future. So we may well find that, um, you know, if we're talking a couple of years time, we may be talking about very different use of technology within camera trapping as it, as it evolves and progresses. Um, Here's a good example of how they've evolved. That is a 10 year old camera. Oh, ah, yeah. Uh, remember these? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So there was a time when this camera was very, very expensive and we thought it was the bee's knees. Hmm. And now we hardly ever use them because uh, the cameras we've sent you and various other cameras that we're using at the moment have, um, have moved on so much. They're so much better. Hmm. Um, yeah. So you still see people using these. Of course, they do work. Um, and we thought they were great uh, 10 years ago. Uh, but yeah, they've moved on a lot. Lots of little subtle design differences that have just made the newer models just easier to use. So the ones we've sent you as an example, uh, it has a little uh, screen, which you'd have seen when you op open it up. It's a screen so you, you can see what the camera's looking at. Um, and that's, that's really useful. And those cameras uh, that Fraser just showed you, those Bushnells didn't have that facility. So, so things like that, that's happening. Um, if anybody's got any questions, by the way, should have said chat, chat's a place where you mm. can, you can yeah. stick questions. Uh, uh, we're happy to address them. A any, any subject areas around uh, camera trapping are welcome. Uh, anything or anything you'd like to know about the course itself. Anything the about the course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do about click on the chat icon at the bottom there and, yeah. uh, and just type drop, in your questions drop us and we'll answer them. Absolutely fine. Um, I think as Fraser was mentioning about access to other sites, and I know that, uh, you know, for different people that are present in different ways. Um, so again, we've, uh, you know, we've got some top tips if you're uh, struggling with that in terms of where you might go and who you might ask for permission to put cameras on site, um, such as Wildlife Trust Nature Reserves for argument's sake, uh, you know, could be useful locations. But if you have a place, uh, again, really for sort of week three, week four, got a little bit of time. We're planning for that. Um, first thing we want you to do is to set it out in the garden, some, somewhere outside. Some of you have already done that. That's great. Um, carry on with that. Some lovely um, hedgehog uh, photos, which are really super. Um, so we pr progress that um, as uh, over the next uh, week or so. Um, so I think, just trying to think if there's anything else. Anybody got any questions just while we're Think about it. Everybody's got onto the virtual learning environment. That's all okay. Give me a thumbs up on that if you've gone onto the virtual learning environment. Excellent. Lovely. Good to hear. Okay. And and you know this is this is a course that you can take at your own pace if you haven't had a chance to yet. You know, still time to to do that. As I say, we'll, we'll release the, the new learning material on Monday of each week as we go forward. You'll have access to the past stuff uh, and be able to uh, catch up or, or keep pace. And, and you know, if it's, um, if it's going too quickly and, uh, you know, you, you're experiencing any challenges, then let us know. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're flexible in our approach. Um, so um, here we go. Question there from Phoebe. Ooh, yes, yes, very good question. Thanks for asking. Yes. Um, yes, when we first started using camera traps, we sort of got into the habit of always pointing them at places where we thought there'd be some mammals to photograph, um, without realizing, of course, at least initially, yeah. that uh, they could be used for birds as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we use them for birds all the time. I've used them for birds in a professional capacity for various uh, studies as well as just out of interest, as well as for public engagement. Um, so yeah, definitely, they're really, really useful for birds. And I hope some of you will be able, will be able to uh, use them uh, specifically for getting bird photos. Um, can, we, can we just go to that uh, phrase? That's a really good question as well about, uh, will it work? This is uh, based on personal ah. experience. Will it work when you point it straight up into a tree? Um, Got to be a bit careful there. Yeah, <laughs> the unhelpful answer is, Yes and no. Yeah. Um, 
yes it will work uh, but <clears throat> one of the things that we'll be uh, um, leading you through uh, later on in the course is how to avoid false triggers and one of the ways to avoid avoid false triggers is not to have too much sky in the picture so if you're pointing upwards into a tree there tends to be quite a lot of sky around the picture that has a definite risk of causing false triggers um, the other issue the main issue i guess with pointing upwards into a tree is the lighting um, to to avoid the picture being far too overexposed because there's so much uh, light when you're looking up the camera will sort of darken the whole thing down which means that your subject if it's sort of in the tree itself will be very underexposed and very dark and hard to make out um, so that's something that we can't really deal with um, you do see shots successful there was, there was a participant on the last course who actually had some shots of kestrels in a tree um, he had a shot of a, um, a fledgling kestrel leaving the nest and it just about worked but only just and he freely admitted he had about 40,000 false triggers mm. before he found the few pictures that he was looking for uh, so yeah um, they do work when pointed up sure. into a tree but you have to qualify that mm. kind of statement with, with all the ifs and buts that follow on really got to think carefully about uh, camera angles uh in that uh, kind of situation and and uh, how best to do it yes yeah, so i tried to uh, photograph some uh, some bats flying underneath a tree in the early days of camera trapping and just had a, a memory card full of waving uh, waving branches <laughs> um, yep. so uh, yeah because it was pointing vertically <laughs> up so live and learn um so yeah, yeah but but it, it is about where you mount the camera and and where it's looking and the the angle towards where the bird might be uh, so mm. somebody think about and of course if you're if you're then having to get up into the tree to mount the camera you just got to think about the health and safety around that yeah okay we've got another uh, message uh, question there yeah. from guto um next week, will we get the better trail camera holder in the post yes you will um we decided oh, yeah. quite early on in this process to start you off with the uh, the strap um as uh, that's what they all come with um so out of the box when you buy one you will have a strap and nothing else. Um, the little brackets that we'll be supplying, which look something like, ooh, which look like that. Um, those uh, we actually make ourselves. You can't buy them like that. There are various uh, proprietary versions that you can buy, but they're terribly expensive. Um, so yeah, we will be providing this in uh, I think it's week three is that right Simon yes yep. yeah week three okay absolutely for UK participants um, yes uh, for UK participants um, oh in in Florida I think uh, that well I know that there are various well, options available in the US we put them on um, our web page yeah and I, I don't know if you've been able to find one but yeah. uh, yeah um, okay um, yeah cool okay that's yes, really good have. Brilliant. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I think the, the other thing that we're learning as we go along here as well and, and, and sort of collecting in your your feedback as we move forward, just as we did with the last course. So, you know, as we come across, as you come across new bits of, uh, you know, new tips, new little bits of equipment that you want that you uh, want to try out, you know, that's all useful stuff as well into the sort of community of interest and into the course. So we can share uh, amongst everybody the kind of experiences. Yeah. Um, Okay, just looking Rebecca, at another question. Coming what is the yeah. recommended distance to place a camera trap from where you think you may capture a subject, e.g., from an animal pathway? Okay, well, um, this is this is a Good very question. important, uh, very important thing to consider. One of the many things that we'll be leading you through when it comes to camera positioning. Uh, the magic distance, really, for the sort of size of wildlife we expect in this country, is three to five meters, maybe up to eight meters. Um, Anything less than three meters, you run the risk of the thing not being focused. Um, and also you're more likely to get a false trigger because if it's moving across the frame, it'll be in view for a very short period. Anything further than about eight meters, maybe 10 meters plus, um, the sort of size of wildlife we have in the UK um, is gonna start to look a little distant. Now I'm aware, and I'm, forgive me, I can't remember who it is, but one of you um, um, does a lot of work in South Africa. Um, 
where presumably you'll be taking photos, uh, potentially taking photos of some much, much larger wildlife. Um, things, shall we say, a little larger than foxes and badgers. Uh, so, uh, yes, when it comes to taking pictures of rhinos, elephants, hippos, whatever, um, you'll have to be a bit further away. Uh, but here in the UK, three to five, maybe up to eight metres. That's the sort of distance you want to be looking at. Great. Okay. Phoebe, often get elephants on cameras down here. Yes, down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Forgive us, we don't have much experience yeah. of that. Um, but it, but, interestingly, uh, there yeah. is a kind of use, universal thing, and I know elephants, are, you know, uh, particularly will uh, have a go at a camera if they uh, if they encounter it, you know, and potentially destroy it. Yeah. And uh, we get we get um, perhaps slightly less trouble, but nevertheless, a similar sort of thing happening uh, here in the UK sometimes uh, with foxes or badgers, mostly badgers, uh, investigate sometimes investigating cameras uh, and sometimes doing little bits of damage. Uh, not uh, yeah. not too uh, too serious, but uh, yeah, it is interesting. I did see some footage on a on a BBC program where they were using these Browning cameras, and um, it was in Africa. And some hyenas had discovered the camera, oh, yeah, and had sort of chewed it a bit. In fact, they chewed it quite a lot. Um, having recently seen a camera that was chewed by somebody's dog, yes, um, I can appreciate. I uh, wonder whose dog that was. I can appreciate how. Um, uh, these hyenas really had to go something to get into it. These Brownings are very, very well made. They're among the best made cameras ever produced. And even hyenas with their famously powerful jaws only managed to sort of nibble the edge off. Um, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't think it would stand too much chance if it's kicked around by an elephant or even trod on by an elephant. But even so, yes. Um, we do have cameras that are interfered with by the wildlife here in the UK. Badgers particularly are very, very keen to have a close look at a camera and to sort of knock it around and sniff it and scratch it and so on. Um, but uh, so far, no damage from badgers. Uh, we did have, did have one that was damaged by a woodpecker. But um, yeah. yes, so far, so good on that one. That, that was a takeout, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, great stuff. So, um, so if you're all set to um, discover your gardens, Put the cameras out, um, see what you get, yep. upload the best three of those images next uh, Monday. So um, uh, when we release uh, week two, that'll be really great. And then we can start to see, you can start to get a feel then uh, for your camera, um, the, uh, the sort of the field of view, the distances of, um, uh, of subjects from the camera itself. And, you know, this is really important part of being an effective camera trapper. And it comes second to um, reading the signs in the field, which was signs of animals uh, being an animal detective kind of uh, role, which we'll be coming to a little bit later on in the course uh, as well. Um, so because that's another key issue. Once you bring those two things together, an understanding of the tech and an understanding of uh, tracks and signs of wildlife, then bring those two together. And that's when you really start to rock and roll as an effective camera trapper um, and uh, start to begin to understand uh, what's in your local area and then from there you can then move into potentially um, slightly more rigorous survey work um, which you know may involve uh, depending on what kind of project could involve multiple cameras uh, or, or a si single camera um, using a specific protocol and we'll be covering um, some of that as well uh, later on in this uh, in this course as we move through but the first thing is to get you familiar with the kit familiar with the process of <coughs> excuse me familiar with the process of moving the SD card into your uh, into your chosen uh, IT whatever that is uh, looking at the images filing those images uploading those images also another really important part um, because you know some of these cameras you can you can be involved as a citizen scientist if you're not involved professionally with this stuff you can be involved as a citizen scientist and you ask to upload photos um, to that so that whole process and learning that process and being comfortable with that so it becomes second nature is the start of this course uh, as we start to discover what wildlife is out there particularly of course at night these cameras are very applicable to nighttime watching so uh, but and that uh, that information can be used in lots of different ways we know it can be used for survey um, we know it can be used for monitoring and it can be also used for uh, spreading the message about the importance of wildlife to, to other people so science communication to a wider public um, those things require slightly different approaches 
Um, if, I, if I really want to know whether or not a Badger set is occupied, I'm going to have a slightly different approach from if I really want to show some really great pictures of a Badger to a, to a general public audience. Um, so it, it'll be influenced by the purpose. But again, we'll, we'll come on to that a little bit, uh, a little bit later on in the course. So any other questions before we kind of wrap up this evening? Everybody okay with, comfortable with what, what you're going to do? over the next, uh, what, six days, six, seven days, till we see you next time. I think it's worth so, reiterating great. What, uh, what we've already said in, the, in the, the Moodle stuff, which is that the camera, as it is at the moment, is preset with all the right settings that you'll need for at least this initial exercise. We will be looking at how to program the cameras to do all the other different options and functions later in the course. But for the time being, the camera is, is, uh, is already pre-programmed and ready and good to go for taking the sort of shots that uh, we would expect you to be getting um, in gardens or other nearby locations. Yeah, which is essentially a set of stills. Yeah. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, sure. Um, so that's really great. Well, thank you ever so much, uh, folks. That's really good. Um, in the interim time, you'll see at the top of, um, uh, of the um, Moodle pages that there's a contact email, info at ambios.net. Just need to enter uh, ECT, effective camera trapping, in the, in the title. Uh, and we're really happy to pick up on, uh, on any, any questions as we go through as well. Um, so our response time may be a little bit longer, um, you know, during, during the days we're dealing, dealing with uh, various things, but uh, by all means use that um, if, uh, if a question comes up uh, and uh, you, you need, need a response. Okay, uh, I think we are- Last question there from Owen. Um, oh, yes. Yes, Owen, you, you obviously have uh, your yep. own camera, not one supplied by us. Yes. Um, so it will be with the default settings, um, which means you'll have, uh, I mean, some of the basics don't really matter. You'll have a temperature in Fahrenheit instead of centigrade. Um, you'll have various other settings that don't make that much difference. Uh, the main thing to make sure is that the camera is set to uh, what they call trail cam. Mm. Um, you have in the options menu, you have the choice of whether you use it for video or for time lapse or for what Browning called trail cam. Um, they all use a different language for this. They all use their own language. Trail cam is really, what they mean by that is just photos, stills. Um, so if you set it to that for this exercise and in the trigger option, if you can get that far, I would um, set it to uh, three, uh, hang on. Um, yeah, three triggered, um, um, uh, what's the, oh, I've lost the word. Three I've images at a time, R rapid fire. Yeah, three images at a time, rapid, that's rapid fire, that's the yeah. word. Yeah. Yes, they call it rapid yeah. fire, so three rapid fire. Yeah. And then the delay setting should be one second. Um, yeah. okay. Other than that, I think you should be okay. Yeah. Um, any issues with that, send us an email and we'll see if we can uh, yeah. help you with that. Yeah. Brilliant. Fantastic. Okay, great. Okay. That's lovely. Thank you very much, folks. Um, we'll stick a recording of this um, possibly on YouTube. Uh, I'll go and investigate that uh, if you need to come back and refresh your memory. And also for those who can't make it this evening, um, so we'll, we'll put it up. It'll be available on Dave, as they say in the UK. Um, so great. Thanks ever so much, uh, folks. And we'll see you um, seven o'clock next week. 7 o'clock London time next week. In the meantime, any questions, email us. And uh, above all else, have fun and enjoy yeah. it. And we really enjoy look yourself. forward to seeing the results. Yeah. Yeah. Looking so, forward to it. Yeah. Have a good evening. Have a good day. Bye. Cheers for now. Bye.